Hello. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome. Uh, you are now hearing the Trisegion. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Music by yours truly. All right. I won't take up too much of your time today. All right. I just want you all to uh, know that I am here under the unction of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Ruach HaKodesh, Ruach HaImet uh, has mandated me to give this to you. Um, how you doing? Y'all all right? Ah. It's good to see you all. Yeah. It's good to see you. It's good to see you all. Lord bless you and keep you. Hello. Hello. Tikia Fowler, Linda Plummer, Victor Shauna Skinner. How you doing? Latrice Rayner. I see y'all. I see you. Come on in. I got some great stuff for you. Yes. Well, without further ado, ah, here we go. Now, let's get this party started. Okay, first I come to you in the name of the Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach, who is Jesus the Messiah. Uh, and in the name of his Father, our Father, one God, one Lord, uh, his name is Yahweh. Yahweh Elohim. And it is by Ruach Kakodesh and Ruach Ka'imet that I am here before you today. Listen, real quickly, I got some great things to share with you. And uh, just so you know, you know, this is a closed group, okay? So you don't have a share option. But if you find this video to be share worthy, if you find this information to be something that everybody needs to hear, uh, if you think it will bless someone, free someone, enhance or enlighten someone, uh, I will open the group up and I will keep it open throughout the weekend uh, to give you time to share it. All right. So after this broadcast, I'm going to open up the way and make it public so that you all will have the opportunity to press the share button if you like. Okay. Uh, I know some of you are committed to not sharing. <laughs> so we're talking to those who don't mind sharing. Okay. So uh, without further ado, got to let you know what the Lord is saying. Um, we are entering into the season of, guess what? What's coming up next? What's what's the major holiday that's coming up? I ain't talking about St. Patrick's Day. Ain't nobody studying St. Patrick. Patrick wasn't a saint. I'm talking about what you know to be Easter, Ishtar, Astarte, Astaroth, Eastern Star, Easter, uh, properly called Pesach in the Hebrew or Passover in the English. So as we come upon Pesach, Oh, Passover. Uh, I want you all to know that uh, I don't come in my own name, first of all. I don't come with my own personal opinions, second of all. Uh, if you subscribe to the page, great. If you don't, fine. Either way, you know, we're going to go forward. And we need to understand that not every ministry gift is going to present uh, Yahweh's message the same way, with the same mannerism, with the same personality, uh, by the same method, okay, with the same cultural uh, worldview. We're, we're not, we're just all different. And that's the beautiful thing about being different, being unique in that God uses each individual for his purpose, he uses each individual, their, your, your personality, your, your uh, idiosyncrasies, all these things that make you you and make me me. He uses those things to bring forth truth, to bring forth uh, emet, all right, by the spirit of emet, all right? So um, I know 
you know, sometimes, you know, uh, I am so misunderstood. I, I think people just, if you would read my post, and I'm talking to all of you, okay? But if you would read my post and read it, really read it, okay, before you comment, okay? Make sure you read it, okay? And if I have scriptures posted on the post, please look the scriptures up and read them and understand them before you make a comment, all right? Okay, do that, all right? Do that. So, that out of the way. God bless you, all of you, and... uh Let's get into it real quick, all right, because I'm going to let you go in a few minutes. Pesach. Like my blessed apostle, Apostle Edwin Von Newsom and Apostle Catherine Newsom uh, of Impact Church Goldsboro, I am not a holiday preacher, but I am a holy day preacher. Did you catch that? I don't preach the holidays because holidays, European holidays, the American holidays, they all they all are drenched in and soiled and marinated in paganism in false worship and idol worship. And uh, the roots are satanic. So I don't get into that. OK, but. Yahweh is calling his ecclesia, the called out ones. In whom dwells his Malkuta, his kingdom. He's calling us to pure, true, pure, true, pure, true worship. Now listen, I didn't come to tear down what you do in your church. I didn't come to rain on your parade. I didn't come to judge you or criticize you or point a finger. No, I come with great news. I come with great news. Oh, my God. Arise, shine, because the light has come. I ain't talking about me because I ain't the light. The light is in me, but I'm not the light, and I'm not the only one who has the light. You got the light. But I do have a message, and my message is not like everybody else's, as you well know. Okay, I, I don't sound like a lot of folk. And that's because I don't idolize or follow or worship a lot of folk, any folk. But I idolize and worship Yahweh. He is my God. Yeshua is my elder brother. And it's the words that are in this Bible from Genesis to Revelation that I preach, teach, and follow, live, and meditate on. And I want to give you that same hunger. I want to whet your appetite so that you'll know that true worship exceeds and transcend what you were taught in your church. What you grew up believing. That's really not true. All right. Pesach versus Easter. Okay, you know what? Do your research, okay? Because, you know, for a long time, I have spoon-fed and handheld a lot of folk. And instead of looking stuff up, people will ask me questions. You inbox me questions. Look, the Internet has everything you need, okay? Uh, you got bookstores. Use your resources, okay? On the way, you got so many resources. I provided books, links, all types of stuff. Go look it up for yourself. Do your own research. Stop asking folk. Go do your own research. Now, if you want to bounce uh, some stuff off of me after you've done your research, if you want to make sure that you're in the right lane or you just want to get some confirmation or clarity, by all means, ask. Because I am willing to listen. I'm willing to help. But, okay, go do your own research. Look some stuff up for yourself. Stop being lazy and be a student, be a pupil, be a Talmudim, a disciple, a disciplined one. Discipline yourself and research. Discipline yourself and study. So the information that I'm going to give you right now, I want you to not take my word for it, but go and discipline yourself. Be a disciple, a Talmudim. Be a disciplined one. One who is focused and have an urgency, a sense of urgency about you that you will go and look some stuff up for yourself because you want firsthand information. Okay, stop looking for people to, to spoon feed you all the time and hold your hand and walk you through. No, you go. You have the strength. You have the knowledge. You're intelligent. You are resourceful. You can do it. Go do it. Study to show yourselves approved so that you won't be embarrassed or ashamed so that you can rightly divide the word of truth. Ah, is that too rough for some of y'all? Am I too hard? Okay, now listen. 
I'm not going to talk to you like you're a baby, like you're an infant. I'm not walking on eggshells with none of you because you all have the same anointing, the same power that dwells in me and you can take it. Okay, and if you can't, come on, grow some thick skin and let's grow up. Let's be mature in the Lord. Let's not be babes all our lives, but let us listen and grow into the things of God. Okay, now we know and you should know that Easter. East star, Ishtar, Astarte, Ashtaroth. You hear what I'm saying, right? Mark these words, mark these names. Go do some research because I've already given it to you in previous posts, in previous uh, videos, in previous lessons and transcripts. You have this information at your disposal on the way. So go do your research. All right. And if you're wondering how to find this stuff, whatever you need, just go to the search bar in the way. Go to the group in the way. Look in the search bar. Put the uh, cursor there and type in a word that you're looking for. And it will come up in the way. Okay, so go look some stuff up. So, Pesach, what is that all about? Let's get to it. All right. First of all, uh, true worship, the way we're supposed to be worshiping, uh, <laughs> the way Yahweh says that we are to worship. I'm not just talking about the children of Israel. I'm not talking about the Jews or the Hebrews. No, those who are engrafted or adopted into the family of Israel, we, all right, and, and evangelical Western uh, churchianity taught you that we are Gentiles. Well, that's not true, okay? If you followed me for a minute, you know who you are, okay? You know that that's not true. But even if we were the Goyim or the Gentiles, we are engrafted onto the olive tree. We are a part of the family of Israel. Now, that doesn't mean that now we are Judaized. Now that we have to, you know, we have to actually partake of or uh, offer sacrifices, you know, and, and burn incense in the temple. Or, no, 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 no. That's why Paul and Peter had to separate because of that very fact. All right. Paul was sent to the Gentiles to let them know, hey, you ain't got to go through all these, you know, rituals and stuff. Just believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Peter, uh, he represents the, the, the black Hebrew Israelites of today. All right. Y'all need to, to do this. You got to be circumcised. You got to do this. You got to worship like this. You got to. Paul and him, they couldn't get along when it came to that. So they had to split up. So I'm here to let you know that I'm not trying to Judaize anyone. OK, <laughs> that's not what I'm doing. I am here to bring truth, to bring clarity as to how we are supposed to worship. No, I'm not preaching or teaching a holiday because there's nothing holy about Easter. Easter is not godly. It's not of God. It's not kingdom. OK, it belongs to the world's kingdom, to the satanic kingdom. OK, but Pesach is holy. Pesach is of the Lord. All right. That's. How are we supposed to be worshiping? So, when you talk about Pesach, I want you to go with me. Um, and if you don't have a Bible, just listen to the video, mark down the scriptures or whatever, and just go to them on your own time. But in the book of Shemot, which is Exodus, chapter 12, verses 8 uh, through 9, it says, Passover uh, was also a time to be continuously uh, nourished in the redemption of the Lamb. Now look, we're going to go to Exodus chapter 12. I want you to see something, okay? Now this is about Yeshua the Messiah. The whole thing, Passover or Pesach, whatever you want to call it, it's about the Lamb. It's about Yeshua HaMashiach. All right? That's who it's about. And we're supposed to be uh, just reverencing Him and, and, and what He represents and just... Oh my God, it's it's powerful. I'm telling you, it's really powerful. So uh, once I get through this, uh, prayerfully you'll have a greater understanding as to what Pesach is and to how we are supposed to practice it. No two families practice it the same. So you can observe it however you feel comfortable or whatever you you know can do as far as your knowledge is concerned. But I'm going to show you how and what it means. Okay, now listen. I'm going to read chapter 12. All right, and chapter 12... Is uh is quite long, so I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but I'm gonna read read enough of it so that you can see where we're going. Okay. All right, listen. 
And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month. Okay, now, what month is he talking about? He's talking about uh, the month of March, or rather April. Um, and that month is actually, uh, it's actually another month, okay? In the Hebrew, it's called another month. But um, I don't want to get all into the months and stuff right now, because we'll do that later. But um, I do want you to know that it is in the month of our April, okay? According to our Gregorian calendar, our April, this is the month that it's talking about when it says this month. All right, let me go. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. What does that mean? Hey, Apostle Catherine. Hey, Cousin Rachel. Hey, Apostle Carmina. Love you. Now listen. And the Lord speaking to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. What month is he talking about? Ah. What month? What is the real Hebrew month? Now, for years, we've thought, you know, it was uh, January, according to the Gregorian calendar. Uh, but then, when you study the Hebrew, uh, Jewish people celebrate it in October, which is Rosh Hashanah. But what is it? What, what, what is the Lord Yahweh saying here? All right, watch this. It's going to blow your mind, I promise. Check it out. It says, speak ye unto the congregation of Israel, saying, in the tenth day of this month, what month? What month is Pesach? What month is Passover? All right. In the tenth day of this month, they shall take unto them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor... Uh, next to his house, take it according to the number of souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. There's enough for everybody, enough lamb for everybody to have a piece of it. Okay. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year, a one-year-old male lamb without spot or wrinkle, without blemish, not sick, not lame, not crazy. All right. You shall take it out of, uh, out from the sheep and, or, from the goat. So they could use a lamb or a goat. All right. It wasn't just a lamb. It's a lamb or a goat. All right. And you shall keep it under or until rather the 14th day of the same month. So you're keeping that lamb for five days. Why? You are the, the Israelites were supposed to be watching it, inspecting it, observing it, making sure that it's not sick, making sure that it's not lame or crazy or, or diseased. OK, without. Blemish, okay? Making sure the temperament of the lamb is right. Y'all listen? Okay. Uh, before you make your sacrifice, you need to be inspecting your sacrifice to make sure it's up to par. Okay? All right. That's, that's a message for another day. All right, listen. And you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat. So wherever you eat your Passover lamb or your Passover setter, um, you got to put lamb's blood, the lamb that you killed, all right? Every household was supposed to have a lamb. Every household was supposed to keep that lamb for five days. Every uh, household is supposed to observe that lamb to make sure that it's without blemish for five days. And then it says on the 14th day, you got to kill it. All right. And, and you know, if the lamb is too small uh, for the lamb or the, the household, you know, it's, it's enough for everybody to go around. Everybody shall take a piece of that lamb. OK. And then you take the blood of that lamb in the house wherein you're eating and you're putting blood on the, on your doorpost, the doorpost where what today's what doorpost, not your house, not your physical house, your literal house, but the doorpost of your heart, the doorpost of your mind, your souls. All right. Putting blood. What is that life? All right. All right. Oh my God. Are you following me? So listen, and they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire. Okay, roasted lamb or roasted goat. 
And Lord knows I love my curry goat. But I'm telling you, they were eating good on Passover. Check this out. And unleavened bread. Unleavened bread. What is unleavened bread? Bread that is baked without yeast, without kametz. Okay? In, 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 in the Hebrew, it's kametz. Kametz is that which causes to rise or swell. Okay? That which makes uh, a, a, a dish or a drink to ferment. That which causes fermentation. All right? And during the Passover, the Jews, the Hebrews, were commanded, read your law, were commanded to get any form of kametz out of the house. Matter of fact, they had to go through their whole house and clean their house of yeast, clean their house of anything that would make swole or the cause to rise. They had to get that stuff out of the house during this feast, during this celebration. They could not have anything in the house. No yeast in the house, period. Okay, why? Because chametz or yeast or leaven symbolizes pride. It symbolizes that which causes you to swell up and be puffed up and rise. That which is unclean. That which is unkosher. All right. So let's go on. And with bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Now, why the bitter herbs? Because the bitter herbs symbolized the bitter pain that the Israelites endured while enslaved in Egypt. During those 400 some odd years. And if you really, really know who you are, then the bitter herbs will not only serve to remind us the bitter bondage that the Israelites of that time suffered, but will also remind us of the bitter bondage that our ancestors suffered again during the Atlantic slave trade in the land of Egypt, the modern Egypt, today's Egypt, America. Okay, now. The very first thing that I mentioned was the lamb or the goat. Now, what does that symbolize? I know I kind of skipped over that one, but I saved that for last because I want to really accentuate that one. The lamb represents Yeshua HaMashiach. That was a promise which was to come. The lamb who would deliver the children of Israel and the whole world from sin and death. So there are three things and I'm almost done. Can you believe it? Almost done. Three things that I want to talk about, okay, during Pesach, all right, during our celebration of Passover, okay. Remember, in the very beginning, I'm going to read that first verse again because some of y'all didn't get it. Check it out. And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, this month, what month are we talking about? What month are we referring to? He's talking about Pesach. He's talking about Passover. Now, that in English or in modern terms translate Easter. So what month is Easter? It's April, isn't it? All right. Keep that in mind. So let's go to verse 2, chapter 12 of Exodus. Again, this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. Ain't that powerful? Powerful, ain't it? Hmm. Yeah. So it's really not October. Mm, yeah, I thought so too, but it's not. All right, check it out. It shall be the first of months or the first month of the year to you. Who is he talking about? Who is he talking to? He's talking to, to the children of Israel. He's talking to his chosen people, those who are a part of his family in his kingdom and grafted onto the olive tree. All right, I just had to go and, and read that again. Okay. Hello, Mother Faye. How you doing? All right. Listen, real quickly. Three things during Passover, and I'm going to correlate them to the natural things and to our modern day life. Okay. The bitter herb. The bitter herb remind us of the purpose of redemption. Okay. Uh, never forget the pain of a life in bondage to sin. Okay. Before redemption came. Also remember the bitterness of pain endured by the Messiah himself. The pain that he endured that we might live. That's what bitter herbs are for during Pesach, during Passover. Okay, what bitter herbs? What, 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 what herbs? I'll leave that to you to research. Okay, but bitter herbs. And there are, there are many types of bitter herbs that you can use. Okay, uh, but uh, these things are supposed to be practiced and observed 
The Lord says, for a memorial to all your generations forever. The church ain't doing that. The church hunting Easter eggs. The church wearing their Sunday's best. But the kingdom is supposed to be worshiping like this. Not because I said so. Not because I think so. I'm telling you what the Lord is saying. You can believe it or not. Turn it deaf if you want. Stay in Lodabar all you want. Circle that mountain 40 more years. But I'm trying to tell you what the Lord is saying and where the church is headed. Where he's taking the church. Where he's going. All right? Please, please. I pray that you receive this word because I'm telling you, this is what the Lord is saying right now. It is for now and it's for tomorrow. Okay. So bitter herbs during Pesach. All right. Remember, the lamb was supposed to be captured or taken out of the sheepfold or the, the goat. All right. Uh, on the 10th day of the month. Keep it and inspect it. Observe it. For five days. And on the 14th day of the month. That's the day that you kill it. And on the day that you kill it. You're supposed to roast it with fire and eat it. But before you do that. You take the blood from that lamb. Or that goat. And you put it on the doorposts. Of your dwelling place. Your mind. An apostle. Edwin. Your land. Mm -hmm. Your heart. Okay. And uh, bitter herbs, remember, bitter herbs, and that's what it, that's what it symbolizes, okay? So you got to have bitter herbs. So the next thing, that's number one, all right? Number two, matzah. Hey, hey, hey. matzah, matzah. What is matzah? Matzah is unleavened bread. Matzah is a Hebrew word that means unleavened bread. It's bread that's flat, bread without yeast, bread without kamets, all right? And it is a living bread which reminds us of the results of redemption. As yeast or leaven represents a type of sin, pride or unbelief. So unleavened bread speaks of sin cleansed life that Messiah brings. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. John 1 and 29. So you got to have unleavened bread. You, matter of fact, read your Bible. Study the law. I've been trying to get y'all to study the law for years. Okay, look at it. Read it, please. Get it in you. Lo know what it says because it's very significant and very timely, very uh, useful for our lives today. Okay, so uh, not only were they to abstain from leaven or yeast, but they had to go through their whole entire house, seek out and clean out all form of yeast or chametz. They could not have it in their house during the feasts. Hi, April. They could not have it in their house during the feast. It had to be clean. Clean your house. Clean your house. Get out the yeast. Get the yeast out of your heart. Get the yeast out of your mind. Get the pride out. Get the loftiness out. The hearty heart. Get that mess out of you. Get it out. Get jealousy, arrogance, envy. Get that mess out. Clean your house. Clean your house of anything that will cause you to swell and puff up and rise. Get that mess out of your house. And not just for this feast only, but it's supposed to be a daily cleansing. Get comets out. Comets should not be in us. Hey, Eves. How you doing, brother? Comets should not be in us. Yeast should not be in us. See, now, uh, we have one more. We, we've gone with the bitter herbs. We've gone over the matzah, Okay. Now, the way the matzah is prepared, remember, there's no yeast, all right? So, uh, but there is olive oil, all right? But there's no yeast. So, um, and maybe one day I'll, I'll make some on, on live broadcast so you can see it. But the way that it's baking, you can Google it or, or go to Bing and you can type in matzah, M-A-T-Z-A-H, matzah, all right? So the way it's baked, it looks like it's got dark stripes on the bread, Okay. And that symbolizes the stripes, the many stripes that Yeshua the Messiah bore when he was whipped with the cat of nine tails, with 39 stripes save one. All right? So, so many great meanings and, and, and explanations concerning uh, Pesach. All right? Now, this is, this is what we're supposed to be doing instead of Easter, instead of Ishtar, Astarte, Asheroth, 
East Star. All right? We're supposed to be practicing, worshiping Yahweh in this way. Okay? Now, let's go to the next one. The, the uh, Lamb. The Lamb reminds us of the price of redemption. Okay? The sacrifice of Messiah. Uh, thus, Passover reminds us to consider privately in our own souls the pain, the price, and the result of Messiah's redemption. Okay, so again, the bitter herbs reminds us of the purpose of redemption. The matzah reminds us of the results of redemption. And the lamb reminds us of the price of redemption because you got to kill that lamb. You got to slay that sacrifice. And not just any sacrifice. Okay, you something that you have to inspect for yourself. Something that you have to really observe and make sure that it is without blemish. You can't just offer God up anything. All right. So that being said, I uh, I'm really done right now. Listen, I am not out of teaching, but I am out of time. So uh, maybe uh, one of these days soon I'll come back and then I will actually expound or exegete um, and go through the whole uh, Pesach or a whole setter, you know service. Um, and, and I will, trust me, I will. And it will be done. I promise you, you'll see it. You will see it. Okay. It's coming, but, uh, I pray and I, I, I just hope, uh, that you all have gained a better understanding about Passover and Pesach, because what it means is we are celebrating and remembering our ancestors and how the Lord God, Yahweh Elohim brought us he took us by the hand and led us out of Egypt. Our, 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 our forefathers, okay? Uh, you know, our great, 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 great. I mean, as, as far as you can remember, I mean, I'm telling you, we are tied by blood, by actual blood DNA lineage to the land of Israel. But if we were not, and we were believers in the kingdom. This is how we worship. This is a holy day. A holy feast day. A holy feast time. A time of observance. A time of participation. The way Yahweh set it up. Back then. And you're saying to yourself. But that's under the law. Well if that's under the law. Stop tithing. If that's under the law. Okay. Well a law, uh, tithing is pre-law. Yeah right. Do your research. Read your law. Okay, I can go on and on about that law versus grace thing, but I want you to understand, okay, that this wasn't something that was uh, organized or ordained for the nation of Israel back then, thousands of years ago. He said, Yahweh said, this will be a memorial for all generations, a memorial. Okay, you don't believe that? Exodus chapter 12, skip all the way down to verse 14. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. And ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. That means forever. The death, burial, and resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah did not change this. Okay? Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. I'm talking about true worship here. True worship. All right? True worship. Not this westernized, evangelical. I don't care if your so-called man or woman of God is doing something different. Follow them if you want to. And they ain't following this right here. You're going to be standing before God saying, Lord, but I did this in your name and I did that. And he's going to say, no, depart. I used to, I used to, uh, you know, just think it was like really, really, <sighs> I couldn't understand how there would be so many people, even elect the chosen, even those who were so powerful and anointed and did so many great things would stand before God and God would tell them to depart because I don't know you. How is that possible? I understand why now. I really do. I understand. Because there is a way that seemed right unto man, but the end thereof is death. 
And we are following all these people and trying to keep up with all these other things, and, you know, whatever floats your boat. But I'm trying to tell you, we need to stay in the book and we need to study and find out what the truth is. Because Ruach HaKodesh, Ruach HaEmet, the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Ghost, is speaking right now. It ain't got nothing to do with me, all right? Because he speaks through you too. But when it comes to worship, when it comes to true worship, when it comes to feast days and holidays and holy days, we're not supposed to worship as the world worship. We're not supposed to participate in the way the world worships. Okay. I think that horse is dead, so I'll just put my stick down. All right. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance to you and give you shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. I love you all. And I pray that you have uh, gained some insight about Pesach. OK, so like I said before, uh, although this is a closed group. Uh, for, for those of you who don't mind sharing someone else's teaching. Those of you who are not insecure or not in competition, for those of you who are not bitter or, you know, <laughs> who are walking in disbelief, I'll give you an opportunity to share this video. So I'll open the group up for you and uh, I'll let it, you know, I'll just let it remain open throughout the weekend and then I'll close it back at the top of next week on Monday morning. I'll close it back. So uh, right now you don't have an option to share. But when this broadcast is over, I will open it up so that you can share it. If you feel that other people need to hear this, if you feel that this message is indeed coming from the throne of Yahweh. All right. So uh, the Lord bless you. I, I, I love y'all. I miss y'all. You know, I mean, I pop up, you know, I'm in the way, you know, and um, like I said, as far as being on the main timeline, Nah, y'all can have that. Okay, y'all y'all can have that. Because, mm, nah, nah, and this is not a mandate from God. This is me. This is all me. But uh, as far as the way, I will pop in every once in a while and drop in some nuggets. And just to check on you, see how you're doing. But uh, I love you. And uh, I will be talking to you all later. Shalom.